let's take a look at this uh, test review. We got um, first problem. We got six R to the third S to the fourth. Minus 12, r squared, s to the fifth. Not, not a very good s. Let me try again. It's as close as I'm going to get. Okay, I want to factor out GCF, I think. Uh, yeah, factor. Number wise, I look at 6 and 12, and I think the largest number divides into both of them, which is 6. Now for the r's. Here I have three r's, here I have two r's. We always factor out the one with the smallest exponent. So I'll bring out two r's. Here I got four s's, here I got five s's. And again, we always bring out the one with the smallest exponent, so I'll bring out four s's. Now six divided by six is one. We had three s's, we took two of them away, so that leaves us, or we had three r's, and we took one of them, or two of them away, so that leaves us a single r. Here we had four s's, we took all four of them away, so there's no s's left. Minus 12 divided by 6 is 2. We had two r's, we took both of them away, so there's no r's left. We have five s's, and we took four of the s's away, so that leaves us a single s. So we're going to have 6r squared s to the fourth times r minus 2s. Okay, so I got 6r squared. eventually. Guess I'll just go there directly. Six S to the fourth. Okay, what'd that leave us? That left us um R minus two S. R minus 2s. Okay. Next question. Factor out the greatest common factor. So we got 2x to the third. Plus 8x squared. Plus 4x. Now here we got three terms. If we look at the numbers, we've got 2, 8, and 4. We think the largest number divides into all three of those, which would be 2. Here we got 3x's, here we got 2x's, here we got 1x. We want to factor out 1 with the smallest exponent. Well, this x here is like x the first, so bring out an x. 2 factor means to divide out, so 2 divided by 2 is 1. We had 3x's, we took one of them away, so that leaves us an x squared. Plus, 8 divided by 2 is 4. We had 2 x's, took one of them away, so that leaves a single x. Plus, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that x is gone. So our answer is 2x times x squared plus 4x plus 2. So 2x, x squared plus 4x plus 2. And next question. I'm going to factor this by grouping. So we got xy plus 7x plus 7y plus 49. First off, we look for the GCF and there isn't one. All four terms have nothing in common. So then four more terms tells us factor by grouping, even if the instructions didn't tell us that. <coughs> we group first two terms together, group last two terms together. Now first two terms, if I look at GCF of them, they have an x in common. And that gives us y plus 7. Our second group are both divisible by 7. And that gives us y plus 7. Now our goal with grouping is we want to get this parentheses the same as this, which they are. So I'll factor out a y plus 7, and that leaves us x plus 7. So y plus 7, x plus 7. 
y plus 7, x plus 7. Here's another grouping one. So we got um, x to the third minus 4x squared plus 8x minus 32. First off, we look for the GCF, and there is none. Four more terms tells us to use factor by grouping. So group first two terms together, group last two terms together. Well, the GCF of the first two terms is x squared. So factor that out, and that gives us x minus 4. Second group, the GCF is 8. So I factor out an 8, and that gives us x minus 4. Now remember with grouping, our goal was to get this parenthesis the same as this one, which they are. So I'll factor out an x minus 4, and that gives us x squared plus 8. So x minus 4, x squared plus 8. x minus 4, x squared plus 8. Next question. Okay, I want to factor this trinomial. So we got x squared minus 16x plus 55. This is the PSD method. The reason why is because we have an x squared x, no x, and there's no number in front of our x squared. PSD, we take the number at the end, ignoring signs. So I'm going to take 55 and come up with the three columns. P column, we write down all products, give us 55. We got 1 times 55, uh, 5 times 11. I guess that's it. Sum column, we add those together. 1 plus 55 is 56. 5 plus 11 is 16. Difference column subtracts smaller from larger. 55 minus 1 is 54. 11 minus 5 is 6. Number we're looking for is a number in the middle term, which is 16, which is right here. So we're going to use 5 and 11. So we got x, 5, x, 11. Now remember our note, the larger number in the p column we're using, we're using 5 and 11, so our larger number we're using is 11, will always be the same sign as the middle term. The middle term in this problem is a negative. Now the number we circled is in the s column, s for same signs. If it's in a difference column, it'd be d for different signs. So s for same signs says they're both positive, both negative. Well, since this one's negative, then this one has to be negative. So we got x minus 5 times x minus 11. So x minus 5, x minus 11. And let's take a look at this one. We got x squared plus 6x minus 7. And it's PST again. Because we have x squared x, no x, and there's a number or no number in front of our x squared. So we take the number at the end, ignoring signs. So I take the 7 and come up with our three columns. It's going to be kind of a boring PSD table. Uh, we write down all products, give us 7. We got 1 times 7. That's it. Um, the sum column, we add these together. 1 plus 8, or 1 plus 7 is 8. Difference column subtracts smaller from larger. 7 minus 1 is 6 number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 6, which is right here, which means we're going to use 1 and 7. Now, a larger number in the p column we're using, which will be the 7, will always be the same sign as the middle term, which is positive. The number we circled is over in a difference column, d for different signs. Since the 7 is positive, then the 1 has to be negative. So we've got x minus 1 times x plus 7. Okay, let's take a look at this one. <coughs> so I got 4x squared plus 7x plus 3. Now this will be the key number. What tells me the key number is we got x squared x, no x, and there's a number in front of our x squared. Now with the key number, we take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So we've got 4 times 3, which gives us 12. And we're still going to build our PSD table. We're just going to use it differently. We write down all products. Give us 12. We got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 
3 times 4. The S column want to add them together. 1 plus 12 is 13, 2 plus 6 is 8, 3 plus 4 is 7. The difference column, we want to subtract smaller from larger. 12 minus 1 is 11, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. Number we're looking for is always a number in our middle term, which is a 7, which is right here. So we're going to use 3 and 4. Now we're going to rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number that we're using, which is the 4, will always be the same side as the middle term. The middle term is positive, so we're going to have a plus 4x. The number we circled is in the s column, s for same signs. Since the 4 is positive, then the 3 has to be positive. Then we want to factor by grouping. So group first two terms together, group last two terms together. First two terms have a 4x in common, and that gives us x plus. Now if it appears like everything's disappeared, remember a factor means to divide out. 4 divided by 4 is a 1, so you're always left with a 1. Plus 3, and that gives us x plus. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now again, our goal was to get this parenthesis the same as this one, which they are. So I'll factor out the x plus 1, and that leaves us 4x plus 3. So x plus 1, 4x plus 3. x plus 1, 4x plus 3. And let me start a new page. <clears throat> okay, next problem, number 8. 6x squared minus 13x minus 5. This is a key number again because we got x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of our x squared. With the key number, we take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So I got 6 times 5 gives us 30. We're going to write down all products to give us 30. We got 1 times 30, 2 times 15. 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Add them together. 1 plus 30 is 31. 2 plus 15 is 17. 3 plus 10 is 13. 5 plus 6 is 11. The difference column subtract smaller from larger. 30 minus 1 is 29. 15 minus 2 is 13. 10 minus 3 is 7. 6 minus 5 is 1. Number we're always looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 13. Well, we got two 13s. Now the uh, sign here at the end, if you got a positive on this number, this number at the end, then that means um, that you're going to be looking, uh, if you got a positive, then that means you're going to be looking in the S column, same signs. If you got a negative at the end, that means you're going to be looking in the difference column, it would be different signs. Well this one's a negative, which means the 13 I want is this one right here. So we're going to use 2 and 15. Okay, our larger number in the P column that we're using, which is 15, will always be the same size as the middle term. So we've got minus 15x. Number of circles in the difference column, D for different signs. Since the 15 was negative, the 2 is positive. Then we want to factor by grouping. Now the uh, first group, they have a 3 and an x in common, and that gives me 2x minus 5. The second group doesn't have anything in common, but you can always bring out a 1. So I'll factor out a 1, and that gives us 2x minus 5. Now our goal was to get this parentheses the same as this one, which they are. So I'll factor out a 2x minus 5, and that leaves us 3x plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. 2x minus 5, 3x plus 1. Okay, 25x squared minus 49. So 25x squared minus 49. This is dots. Difference two squares. Two terms with a minus between it. So we try to write it as something squared minus something else squared. 5 times 5 gives us 25, x times x gives us x squared, and 7 times 7 gives us 49. 
Now I'm going to label what's inside my first set of parentheses is, is F for first. And I'll label what's inside my last set of parentheses is L for last. And this is just a formula. Assuming you can rewrite it as something squared minus something else squared. Now here's a formula. F plus L times F minus L. So everywhere I have an F in my formula, I'll plug in 5X. And everywhere I have an L, I'll plug in 7. So we've got 5X plus 7 and 5X minus 7. And that's our answer. Okay, next question. Find all solutions. So we're wanting to solve this. So we've got 5x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, we're going to be using the zero factor property, zero product principle. So we have to get 0 on one side, which we have. And then we want to factor the other side. Well, this is the key number again. Because we have x squared, x, no x, and there's a number in front of our x squared. Again, the key number, you take the number at the beginning times the number at the end, ignoring signs. So you get 5 times 2 gives us 10. We want to create our PSD uh, chart. Uh, all the products give us 10. We got 1 times 10, 2 times 5. S column, add them. 1 plus 10 is 11. 2 plus 5 is 7. Sum them. Difference column, we want to subtract them. 10 minus 1 is 9. 5 minus 2 is 3. Number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is a 3, which is right here, which means we're going to use 2 and 5. And we're going to rewrite our middle term using those two numbers. The larger number that we're using, which is the 5, will always be the same sign as the middle term, which in this problem is a negative. The number we circled in the difference column, D for different signs, means we want to be positive, we want to be negative. If the 5 is negative, then 2 has to be positive. They want to factor by grouping, so group first two terms together, group last two terms together. First two terms have a GCF of 5x, and that gives me x minus 1. Remember, when it appears like everything's factored away, you're always left with the 1. Plus 2, and that leaves us x minus 1. Our goal was to get this parentheses same as this, which they are. So I'll factor out an x minus 1, and that gives us 5x plus 2. Now the zero factor property. That says if you get zero on one side and you factor the other side, you can set each factor equal to zero. So I'll set x minus one equal to zero and five x plus two equal to zero. So that gives us x equals one. And then this one take the two over, becomes a negative two, and divide both sides by five, and we get negative two fifths. So one and negative two fifths would be our answer. How do they want us to write that? Use comma to separate the answers. 1 comma negative 2 fifths. Ah. And let me check my check my work then. I got 100%.